is going to teach us how to create an ice pack, right? So if you... Concierge Medicine Forum when we were all able to gather live and in person, and we will again, I promise. But we had a group of physicians in Concierge Medicine and an attorney get together for a panel to discuss what the future of medicine is truly going to look like. And one of the things that came out of there, one of the topics or the, the phrases that came out of there, the themes, was every doctor is in the customer service business. And I love that, the essence of what that means, because right now, I don't know what it's like to be a doctor, but I do know what it's like to sit on the other side of you. I know what it's like to be sitting in that exam room, feeling all alone, feeling like you're hurried, you're rushed, and I'm not gonna get my answers. So earlier this year, we put to the test a, a topic, which is how do we deliver great, how do doctors, how can we support doctors by delivering great messages of gratitude that communicate thankfulness uh, all year long. So we put together a new course here at Concierge Medicine today and within this course you can go to courses uh, over there on the left hand side of your screen and we put together a co course called how to implement a patient gratitude system and I know that you're going to want to check it out because we've got something for every single month of the year and it's just a unique little place it's a unique little course that offers something unique that you could do to enhance the patient experience to communicate how thankful you are towards your patients because doctors of the future are going to be more concerned the great doctors of the future are going to be much more concerned about being coming fans of their patients than having it be the other way around. And not only that, not only did we put together this great course for you, uh, we put the course to the test. And we asked doctors earlier this year, and we sent doctors hundreds of thank you notes, personally handwritten by myself, uh, with a gift inside. And you responded in spade. And I have a whole drawer full, uh, as well as uh, of all of those notes. So I wanna thank you for that. So I want you to go check out our new course, how to create a patient gratitude system all year long with your patients. I know you're going to. So our guest today on the Docpreneur Leadership Podcast here at Concierge Medicine today is Dr. Chataverde. And I apologize if I've gotten your name mispronounced, but you are the medical director of HealthClick, which is based in London, England. So from across the pond, welcome to the Docpreneur Leadership Podcast by Concierge Medicine today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And also, congratulations on becoming a Concierge Medicine today top doctor in Concierge Medicine. You're among a select and unique group of physicians out there in the world. Uh, so congratulations on that as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Dr. Chataverde, before we jump in, just tell us your story. What led you to become a physician? Um, where are you, you from? Uh, what brought you to where you are today? Yeah, actually, I was born in India. And I did my medical education in Calcutta, which is the eastern part of India. And when I was growing up, I saw that uh, when I was used to visit our physician, family doctors. 
so i saw number one that they were very prescriptive you know they didn't look the illness from a patient's point of view how the patient is feeling and what does the patient want from the doctor so when you go to them as you said you have to work around their schedule and you're waiting to be seen by them and not involving patient in the conversation or in the decision process you know and i thought that was what i realized when i was growing up i thought that is so weird so i mean i am the patient as you said earlier and you should be working around me rather me running around you so that one feeling just changed my attitude and i thought you know and plus i you know as usual you you have some passion to help others you know without any strings attached to it and that gives you a very good feeling you know if you can save one life or two life when you're in hospital medicine or you can help one or one, even one patient in a week that make you so happy when you are a conscious doctor so all those feelings together made me to apply for medical school in india and it was quite competitive like 120000 posts and uh, no 120000 candidates there were in my state there were only 325 posts wow. so through that competition i became a uh, doctor then i uh, did my diploma in radiology back home then i did my masters in general surgery and then i thought you know i i have experience in radiology and surgery so let me go out to the world and see what is happening in the western countries and that's how i came to uk so mm-hmm. i gave entrance examination and i worked in various specialties like accident emergency orthopedics pediatrics ops and gynae and then i realized that you know that hospital medicine is taking too much of time for me i should be a family doctor and with my background my mentor told me that you have a, such a background in two countries why don't you put this experience into family doctor so that's how i became a member of our college of general practitioners practitioners in uk and i became a general practitioner and you and, have a sorry you have a pretty large resume or cv of what you've accomplished what you're doing uh beyond just the exam room tell us a little bit about what your and i'll let you continue your story yeah so so and then uh, i was i have been working in the national health service and of course when you are under a system you have limitations of prescribing or taking care of the patients you have many patients to look after you you can't give that uh, uh, that dedicated time to a patient so it's like a revolving door you know one patient and other goes out after a few years i i thought that's not i'm for actually and one of my friends is a family doctor in memphis in us and we are constantly in touch with each other how they work there so i was getting that experience of us as well and i did usmle exam to be trained in us uh, in my younger days so i had some knowledge how the system works in us and then we started this business my daughter started this business of constant medicine a very new concept to uk nobody knows what is constant medicine they have very weird idea but what they think you know constant medicine is not what constant medicine is that so she said that would you be happy to become medical director and guide us through so i thought yeah why not so i cut down on my nhs national health service work and i dedicated time to uh, health click and that's how i became medical director wow. because i was also involved in uh, care quality commission which is a institute in uk which uh, which looks after the uh, licenses of various hospitals and the family doctor surgeries their offices so i was visiting as a part of the care quality team to see whether they are living up to the standards or not so that experience helped me i have been a gp trainer so a family doctor trainer so i know how to train the doctors what techniques or what where they lack their learning needs are so all that experience was working so many specialties that really really helped me to shape up health tech wow 
Well, and our guest today is Dr. Chad Averde. He's the medical director of HealthClick, and you can learn more about HealthClick and what they're doing in the, in the UK uh, in the links above and below. And, uh, you know, what I think for many physicians, they uh, equate anything that's not within the medical system within the United States, uh, they're, it's kind of foreign. It, and we almost think of it as, well, when I go on vacation, I just hope I don't get sick and I hope I don't have to go see a doctor when I travel outside of the country. And so tell us a little bit about some of the similarities and differences you see between what you do on a daily basis or what, you, what you've seen in your history in the UK versus what's happening in the US as well and maybe other countries. Yeah, yeah. So basically, if I just say very broadly, the expectations of the patients in UK are not that high because they're used to the National Health Service. So the expectations from the doctors are not to that level. And like a, like an annual checkup concept is not very prevalent in UK. And, but uh, they, they, they're not that familiar with the going out proactively and finding like a, finding things and and like in, uh, knowing your risk and the working in your risk they, they are not very much aware the the population what i have seen the us population they are quite knowledgeable and the type of population we deal they have a lot of knowledge and they are very prone to work proactively with our team to identify the risk factors and the work about it so they will come out reach out to us and say this is my family history. I want to look look on this, you know, this type of, uh, can you just help us in that? So they are quite proactive. And when they travel to various countries, they are in touch with us because we reach out to them wherever they go in the world. But when the UK patients go to other countries, they don't have that concept that I can still contact my doctor, like my concert doctor back in UK, they can they can get me connected to the right person. But now this concept has developed a lot, lot more. And in the Middle East and the South Asian countries like India and Dubai, Oman, and they don't have any concept of family doctor. So if they have like a problem in the nose, they will get up and go to the hospital, get seen by the by the nose specialist ENT or they have some chest pain, they'll go to the heart doctor. They don't have concept of family doctors in, the, in those countries. So that is quite strange and quite a, a learning process for me that how to inculcate that you know, knowledge into them that you know, that I'm the family doctor, I can deal and, make, and help you with so many things rather than you have to pitch up in hospital each time. But now our, the core of members, now they understand that you know, that what is the role of family doctor? They're, they're realizing now that a lot of things which I have to rush to the hospital, I don't have to, they can solve it out. So there's a quite a bit of contrast in UK, which is a part of the Europe and US and the Middle East and back some South Asian countries. Well, and when we think about uh, patient expectations, you know, across, across uh, you know, country boundaries and, and state boundaries are, and you said that the patient expectations are fairly low. And being from Canada as well, you know, it's amazing to talk with people from different countries about their healthcare. And it's almost a benevolent, uh, you know, concept of someone else was in line in front of me, and I'm okay with that. And I'm okay to wait for care. Uh, but cost is such a big deal here in the States. Is cost a big, you know, control mechanism in the UK where you're practicing among your patients as well and, and maybe patients in the past where, you know, what's most important to the patient? Is it relationship with my physician, cost or convenience or maybe a distant other? Okay. So for my patients, the most important thing for them is uh, convenience and the relationship with their family doctor. And the knowledge of the family doctor and how they deal with them, that is so important because a large cohort of our patients are uh, 
like world citizens and they have very little time and so we have to work around their time schedule even if like somebody finishing shooting schedule at 10 o'clock at night would like to be seen at 11 o'clock at his residence or between lunchtime in his meetings so those type of patients the convenience is so important and about that i have noted one thing the our cohort of patient they they love confidentiality the discreetness of the service because uh, although every doctor has to be confidential we maintain confidentiality that's a part of our job but to make them realize and doing their their health checkups and animal checkups very discreetly and around their convenience of time convenience of place that is so important to them and when they come they don't open up instantly but in due course of time they develop that faith and and they they open up and they tell you more and more things and they listen to you and most important thing is that they have already a lot of knowledge they know many of the patient what is concert medicine they know their options but they want to hear from us and get involved in the decision making process give them the pros and cons and help them to come that decision you know sometimes in the past comes some celebrity had bilateral mastectomy because the very high risk of families to breast cancer so they will come back and speak to us so giving that evidence to them that what is best in their case and in so that is so so important to them so i think cost takes a back seat to large number of our patients but other things are so important and they pay attention to them and that no like and trust factor has i mean we surveyed patients who are not yet members of these types of uh, subscription healthcare delivery models across the country and across the globe over the years and we find that those patient expectations are also very low and when we asked, hey, dear patient, if your doctor closed their office tomorrow or next week and you were just notified, how, mu how much or how little would you actually care? And almost eight out of 10 people, patients, new, you know, not members of, the, of concierge medicine practice, but general population said, it really wouldn't matter to me. And I think that that's a sign that we're starting to see patient burnout. And we hear a lot about physician burnout. And believe me, we've done our due diligence and share of, of education around that topic as well and continue to do so because it's important. However, patient burnout is far more, um, you know, I wouldn't say important, but it's also, it's, a, it's just as critical because we're, you know, my, my wife, for example, went to a ped our pediatrician and she's got our three kids sitting there in these, you know, chairs that are probably 20, 25 years old and, you know, environment is, you know, lacking and discretion is lacking and staff, um, you know, friendliness is lacking. And we want our doctor to know us, like us, and we want to like them and we want to trust them. And the trust factor is also about, you know, we ask patients, hey, how much do you actually trust your physician? And it was about six to seven out of 10 patients said, not, no, not really. I mean, I go for a second opinion anytime I can. And, you know, we do have access to more uh, knowledge than ever before. And that increases your um, responsibility as a physician and puts more weight on your shoulders because you're, you know, answering, hey, doc, I've got all these pieces of paper from the internet. You know, can you, t can you answer all of my questions? And so, when people come in and first connect with you and your team at, there at HealthClick, what are some of the usual questions and overcoming objections, um, you know, easing of that tension, that misunderstanding? I know for many of the people I see and even physicians, when they bump into this idea of concierge medicine, it's, you know what, I, I read stuff about that or, you know what, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I want that for my daughter or I want that for my kid. So tell us a little bit about how you overcome and educate patients and your peers. Yeah, the most important thing is that uh, most of our patients, as you very rightfully said, 
they come for the second or the third opinion or problem is going on for a few years and they don't know what it is and they've been shifting doctors after doctors so most important thing to to admit what is your boundary of your knowledge if you don't know you should know that i don't know about it so be honest and tell them look i don't know i have not read that paper but i'm happy to go back and read that paper and come back to you with my opinion or i i have very little knowledge on this subject but i will ask the specialist and i will come back to you with an answer so that that gives them that trust and then honesty and openness and that is how you build the trust and relationship with your patients and like many patients of course come to me like many things about bioidentical hormones etc etc and there was a stage i don't know in the uk what was bioidentical hormones and i told them look i know it's very prevalent in U usa where you live but unfortunately i don't have much knowledge that's how i identified my learning need and i attended a course in us so i updated myself which i'm going through the course now about the bioidentical hormones but i introduced them i found out a physician who's well known to the bioidentical hormones and they were introduced and that problem was solved so this is the way they know okay i can trust this doctor if he doesn't know he will come back and introduce me to an experienced person who can take care of me in the right manner so as you said largely patients come start this is the way they start journey with us second or third opinion mm. and and they say i've been to many doctors but they can't see me sunday 11 o'clock to my client is it possible you can arrange this test sunday evening so we said okay we can do that and when we arrange they say okay they can go more than a mile beyond a mile to my patient and they become members then in due course of time one of the patients if i give an example I had very lone person in uk just collapsed and then he was then they called us because we have seen that person a couple of times and they said this is a problem how do we deal with it so we managed to take him to the nearest accident emergency department casualty and we maintained the discreteness we spoke to the medical director straight away and say this is a problem and we need to make it very discreet wow. so the when everything was done everything was sorted and they came back to us and they became the whole family of our members so that's a first contact how you develop the trust and you build up a relationship it and, seems and, as though there that's an interesting parallel to a story we heard from one of our speakers um uh he said you know if you want a patient for life visit them in the hospital and regardless of if you have here in the states if you have privileges at that hospital for admitting purposes you know that's not the point the point is go if you found out that one of your patients is in the hospital car accident whatever it might be you ju are just going really as a friend to show your support that look you've got a partner we're going to get through this together you you may not you know you may have this fear that you have to overcome personally to say well i don't want to answer the questions from the family because i'm not the physician who's taking care of this you know his his bones or you know what whatever he might have 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 happened but that's not the point the point is the relationship and the relationship over care sometimes means more to patients than anything i don't know care how much you know i care that you actually care about me absolutely and that is our uh, this is our like a um, laid rule if any of our patient visit a uh, consultant goes to hospital for an investigation or he goes to any of the physician for any reason one of our doctors will accompany with them this wow. is we can we are coming with you until unless they say we don't need you that is fine but we will go with them take their permission sit in the consultation and help to liaise with each other so that when they come out of the consultation room they have not heard what they don't want to hear so we explain everything what happened this is what has happened and we can fill up the gaps in the history of the patient when they're speaking to the relevant health professional and they really really 
admire that as a, they value it that as you said rightly you are by my side you care for me and although i am not a cardiologist and and i am not an orthopedic surgeon but i am there by your side when you are visiting them explaining everything to you and i think that how the trust begins to develop with your patient and they don't as you said lifelong they won't leave you yeah interpretation of you know acronyms and cuz i mean we've all sat in those exam rooms where you know a physician comes in some you know drops all these acronyms and word bombs and essentially w walks out of the room and we're left in the wake of well how much is this going to cost what is what is that how serious is that what does that involve does that require another appointment and then then someone else comes in who's not you know <laughs> They're not equipped to answer the questions that we were just left in the wake of. And so I want to talk a little bit about create, we're going to kind of cover a couple of questions here. Uh, one is about creating irresistible environments and excellence in the practice of medicine. And it is, we talk a lot about here about marrying the Hippocratic Oath with the golden rule. And that that is what concierge medicine physicians do. And, you know, We've, we talked a little bit about, you know, if a patient said, my doctor is closing tomorrow, I, eight out of 10 of them wouldn't care. For many people globally, when they think about going to the doctor, going to see a healthcare, getting something fixed in their healthcare wellness area for their body, is it's a pothole in the road to health and wellness. And what concierge medicine does and what we're trying to share is, and have, the reason we're having these important discussions is, you know, it gives us others in medicine, others in healthcare, hospitals, doctors, specialists, whatever, something to say, you know what, that's how healthcare should be and could be delivered. And it's probably how it used to be delivered decades ago, but somehow we've put a lot of things in between the, the patient and the physician. And now I'm trying to, as a physician, educate the patient on, there's, here's what you need to do but yet I've been distracted as a patient by so many things that have distracted and dis I'm now disinterested in what you have to say because so much stuff has gotten in the way. So irresistible environments and excellence in the practice of medicine is something that we, we want to talk about. So talk to us about what you're doing uniquely better in your practice. Very interesting, very interesting question. I think you have nailed it. So the most important thing for the, for the patients is that, you know, when they, like we have got the administrative team, so they will liaise very proactively with their PA or the executive assistants of the patient's family. So they will liaise with the timing appointments, they will remind them of the appointments, with way before them. They will arrange everything. They will go with them to the appointments, fill up the forms for them beforehand, afterwards, during the appointment. So the, the patient doesn't have to fill up any information. It's all being filled up by our administrative team. Number one thing. And that works very well so that their their assistance or the patient doesn't have to bother. I have to remember my appointment. I have to remember this. So we we tell them, we provide them, offer the transport as well, that we will come and pick you up, take, take you to the hospital, bring you back to, from the hospital, our admin team accompanying them and doctors meeting them there. This is, and we work very closely, proactively with our consultants, with the specialist doctors. With our experience over the years, we have, uh, we have a team of specialists whom we can trust, who, who has similar ethos to us like convenience, having trust, confidentiality, discreetness, you know, small things like being well-dressed, being polite, smiling to the patient. And those things we take into our consideration when we work with the specialist doctors, speaking in the same language as the patient can understand. We do home visits for the patients throughout the year, which is a concept not very popular in America, I think, but we do home visits seven days a week, 365 days a year, to a, at a plate of, as a place of their convenience. So somebody is like, say, look, I'm very busy that day, but you know, 
uh, I need to be seen, but I can't take out the time. I said, okay, uh, we tell them, what, what about the lunch time? Do you, do you get break in the lunch time? Our doctor will be there. The things which we can do uh, with our doctor's bag, there we can do it. So they get showed. Oh, you can come there. I say, yes, we can come at, at your shooting schedule. Just give us 20 minutes, half an hour. We will sort it out. The person to take the blood sample will be there. We will take the blood sample there. We will examine you and we will send the medication very discreetly in a flower bouquet to you. No, nobody will know what is there. So <laughs> they just get, get shocked. Oh, that can be done. So they are delivered flower bouquet flower with an envelope inside there is a medication they can start taking medication nobody knows what it is so the, that the small things uh, which have helped us to stand out from rest of our competitors so so and and that the team of our patient the admin team and the patient themselves they really really cherish that and 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 they appreciate it they always say oh, that that was very good so that gives us okay this is working well so we keep on doing that hey everybody this is not the end of the road and it's not the last breakout session we've just unlocked for the day don't forget to go back and check out the other digitally unlocked videos that we've released there's a ton of content a ton of topics that you're going to want to unpack and dive deeper into in the next few hours days and weeks to come so go back to day one two or three and check out the breakout sessions and the general sessions Feel free to continue to comment on those sessions, even if you're watching the replays. We're continuing to monitor and watch those threads and try to answer all of your questions and comments as the next few days and weeks unfold. So go check out those other videos in day one, two, and three, because there's a ton of great content. Thank you for doing all that you do. Again, it's not about being the best doctor in the world any longer. It's about being the best doctor for the world for your patients and for your local community. And we are for you. Let the notes fly.